So, I'm back with another Behind the Beat. Uh, this is the first time I've ever tried to film something like this. Do audio uh, and stuff like that. So, this is the quarantine edition. We really got nothing but time right now. So, um, this first joint I'm going to break down for you is uh, a remix I did to like a West Side Gun and uh, MF Doom song. And uh, it was just something I felt like remixing. I did a whole uh, project that I put on Bandcamp called the Snare Jordan Symphony remixes. And uh, yeah, you can go on my band camp and peep that. I'll probably put all of them on this YouTube page as well so you can check them out that way. Anyways, I did this whole beat on Pro Tools so I can actually like show you the screen recording and all that kind of stuff, which makes it, um, you know, really simple to show you every single element of it that I did. So um, I started this one with... Uh, what I've been doing a lot with new beats I've been doing is using this uh, program called the Isotope RX-7. And what the RX-7 is really good at is taking, you know, your any any song and kind of creating like a, a bootleg uh, multi-track out of it. So let me find... Uh, the song I use might be a little hard, actually. Uh, all right, so keep on moving, soul to soul, featuring Karen Wheeler, one of my favorite joints. I think I was like in eighth grade when this dropped at Mini. I think I bought the Kasingle or something. Anyways, song I always thought was dope and had wanted to flip. So I really just been trying various things uh, on this program. So. You go into it, you pull up this musical rebalance thing, and it gives you an option to do voice, bass, percussion, or other. And a lot of times, if I'm just looking for, you know, some music ideas to start a beat with, I might just run a song and, and click on other. And that way, it's just going to give me um, everything but the voice, bass, and percussion. And, you know, it's not perfect at all, but it definitely gives you, you know, the option to do something so we're not gonna wait for this to transfer because I already did it um, so let's go into Pro Tools and I'll show you how I chopped this sample um, so I'm using Serato sample in here and to chop my samples and I don't know for, for whatever reason for me it's the closest uh, thing I've had that gives me the same feel that I get on the ASR where I can put in my chops and it's really easy and simple. Um, the time stretch on there is just crazy. The way you can just pitch things up and have a matchup to whatever other beat you already got in there is just incredible. Anyways, this thing has definitely changed um, how I've been making music like the last year or so. So anyways, let's listen to Keep On Moving, uh, Soul to Soul. This is through the RX-7. So you can hear like there's some digital remnants, a lot of them, but it kind of gives you like a cool grit to it. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys know the song, I imagine a bunch of people do. Um, so, you know, you can kind of hear the bass in the background and the percussion a little bit. But if you're good at, you know, piecing things together, it gives you enough where you can really make a new idea. So, what I did is I came up with this little progression. Get So, you know, I, I lay down that little progression and this is it bounced out. It's just easier for me to do it that way. Um, so 
So I bounced that out and then I, I really went in next and uh, got some drums. So, you know, with, with being able to use this uh, RX-7 thing, you can also separate the drums by themselves. So there was always like a bunch of songs. I love the drum sounds. I mean, I might've liked the song in general, but um, they had a lot of music on them. So I couldn't flip them unless I put something in key. So this was a record in particular I've always wanted to touch the drums on. Uh, Moses Dilliard, I've got to find a way. Uh, I actually used this for a joint on a White Van Music album that I just didn't end up putting out. I think like G-Rap and somebody else were on it. Um, but anyways, people sample this, people know this shit. But the drums is what I wanted to get. So... <laughs> So yeah, I took this Moza Jilly break and uh, Dilliard, I think that's how you say it. Uh, and then I, I chopped them up into the pieces. So then I, I sequenced that with uh, the piano part. So you get the idea of, of how the drums are kind of fitting in there. Um, for whatever reason, it this those drums really kind of gave me the vibe of uh, of the joint uh, Labby Sifri. I got the blues, the breakdown, the ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Anyways, Eminem used it or whatever. Who you know? You might know that. You might not. Look it up. Labby Sifri. I got the blues. So I had the idea to kind of make the bass do a similar thing to that. So I used this program called Melodyne to kind of, I took a couple bass notes and just placed them with the drums to make it bounce in that same way. Uh, so you can see. And these, I think this may be like, it's just this note and this note, and then I just copy them like this. Copy them, and then, you know, you can move these to the right spaces and the right notes, and then it kind of sounds like you have a real bass player in there, which I just, I love the way that shit sounds. Um, so yeah, I'll play, you the, I'll play you this with the drums now and the bass. So this is with the piano, bass, and drum break. So yeah, from there I kind of got, you know, I got a cool little beat. Um, and then I just started adding more things, so up Serato sample again and uh, I have these Rhodes chops anyways I thought that part would land really dope when it goes to kind of the second half of the beat so So then I'm just looking for more things to add. And you know, one of the, probably one of the signature things I've done in my beats over the last, whatever, six, seven, eight years is just taking like random oohs and ahs and making them fit into whatever else I'm doing already. Um, so of course I got plenty of those in the stash. So 
I'll pull up some oohs and ahs and, you know, tune it so it works with, you know, those chords that I, where I want to place it. So I had to go, you know, down two to make it make sense. So now I add the, uh, the vocal part. So now I got those vocals in there, I got the roads, I got all these different chops. And the next thing I wanted to add was just another thing to make it, like really with my style, when I try to put all these things together, I'm trying to give you the feel of something that sounds like a loop, but it's not. Cause I mean, I might use loops on occasion, but I feel like when I use a loop, it's not really me controlling what makes it good. So just selfishly, I like to be able to create something that I feel like I had could put my stamp on, you know, uh, in whatever way. And that's kind of what this style, which, you know, really the style of putting all these things together, I just got from my original, you know, hip hop teachers when I was a kid listening the Public Enemies and Dr. Dre's. They always had a million samples in their beats, but they all fit together perfectly. And, and I really appreciate, you know, just that texture i really feel like that's missing in a lot of production this day but i get it like you know you're not going to clear 15 samples so i kind of try to do it in a different way and this is part of my process uh so yeah i got this little synth part i think it's an arp that i had just doing this kind of little weird weird thing and i just placed that in there too That's like, you know, it gives me enough things to be able to do breakdowns with and, uh, you know, to to fit in with the vocals and make it interesting and not just like four bars of it doing the same thing for four minutes because that gets tired. Um, last thing I put on there was an 808 because, you know, it's 2020 and you got to have the 808 in there. I just, I just enjoy hearing 808s and beats like this. Actually, you know what I forgot? That I put this kick in there as well because I felt like, you know, the, the Moses Dillier break was a little light, so I needed to add something to beef it up. So I took this. So yeah, I put this kick in there uh, and you can kind of hear the kick with just the drums and the bass. Uh, So yeah, I put that in there just to give it a little more oomph, uh, just to make it hit harder. And uh, that it definitely did. Um, last thing I threw in there was the 808, if I could find it, um, which I got um, from my homie uh, B-Boy. Shout out to B-Boy. And uh, I didn't put it like all through the beat. I just wanted it to kind of hit in a couple places. Get it to play. Um, so yeah, let me let me throw that in there. Can't remember what it was. So yeah, the 808 is not like coming in all the time. I just, you know, I think riding around the car, you just want to hear something hit a little more than just like your regular mid-range kick. Um, 
And that's kind of like my way of not just having it be so old school and dinosaur though. You know, I'm always gonna have that in there. Um, last thing I threw in the beat, which I think is amazing because I've been wanting to drop for a minute. Um, I used the RX-7 to take these vocals from Bootsy off this Snoop song I did. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It was the intro to the documentary album. Anyways, Bootsy says my name and I've been wanting that drop for a while. So here it is. Uh, check one. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty amazing to be able to throw that in there. So here's the beat from the top. Yeah. 